In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine if an element is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. So what you need to know is this. A paramagnetic element has unpaired electrons. A diamagnetic element does not have any unpaired electrons. So in order to determine this, we need to write the electron configuration for argon. The atomic number of argon is 18. So a neutral atom of argon has 18 protons and 18 electrons. So let's write the electron configuration. Now, the S sublevel can hold up to two electrons. P can hold up to six, D can hold up to 10, F can hold up to 14. We're gonna write the configuration until the exponents add up to 18. So we're gonna start with 1s. So we're gonna have 1s2. And then after that, we're gonna move on to 2s. So it's gonna be 2s2, and then 2p, and then 3s. So it's 2p6, 3s2, and then after that, 3p6. If you were to add the exponents, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6, you would get 18. So that is the electron configuration for argon. Now we're going to draw the orbital diagram for this element. So we have the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital, and then the 2p sublevel, and then the 3s sublevel, and then 3p. Now notice that each of these orbitals, they're completely filled with electrons. We have a total of 18 electrons in a neutral atom of argon. So we don't have any unpaired electrons in this example. Therefore, this substance is diamagnetic. A diamagnetic substance is one that is weakly repelled by an external magnetic field. Now let's work on another example. So let's use aluminum. Feel free to try this example. Aluminum has an atomic number of 13. So let's write the electron configuration. Aluminum is in the third row, so we only need to go up to the third energy level. So we're going to start with 1s, and then after that it's going to be 2s, and then after that it's going to be 2p, 2p6, and then 3s2, and after that is the 3p level. But we're going to stop at 3p1, because if we add the exponents, this is going to give us 13 which is the number of electrons in a neutral atom of aluminum. Now, everything is going to be paired except the N. So we're going to focus on the last two sublevels of aluminum. So that is the 3S sublevel and the 3P sublevel. So we have two electrons in the 3S sublevel, but we only have one in the 3P sublevel. So because we have an unpaired electron in aluminum, we can say that aluminum is a paramagnetic substance. A paramagnetic substance is one that is weakly attracted to an external magnetic field. Now let's work on one more example. Let's try manganese. Feel free to try this example if you want to. Manganese has an atomic number of 25. So you can write out the chart that we had, but we can go straight to the configuration. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that's 10 so far, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d5. So note that this part is the electron configuration of argon. 
So you can rewrite the configuration using noble gas notation by replacing everything up to 3P6 with argon. And then it's going to be 4S2, 3D5. So we're going to draw the orbital diagram of this part only because everything before it is going to be paired. So this is the 4S sublevel, and that's the 3D sublevel. So we have two electrons in the 4S sublevel, but we have five electrons in the 3D sublevel. Now we need to add them one at a time because electrons prefer to have their own orbitals instead of sharing orbitals with other electrons. So notice that we have five unpaired electrons in this example. Therefore, manganese is highly paramagnetic. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to determine if a substance is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. An element is going to be paramagnetic if it has unpaired electrons. It's diamagnetic if it has only paired electrons.